Well, this is going to be our last video cast before we begin to replay some of the mind change moments that we've done over the last four years. And today, I want to take just a moment and give you a little bit of history of my own thinking about the subject of the Kingdom of God. And then I want to close out by making what I feel like is a, an extremely important point. It was uh, about 1971. I was beginning to grow long sideburns, as was the custom then, and wearing those uh, handsome bell-bottom pants when I first picked up a copy of John Bright's classic book, The Kingdom of God. I remember being quite intrigued by the book because I was almost finished with a master's program in theology, and yet uh, we had hardly talked about that subject at all. And yet, I don't remember the book having a real earth-shaking effect on me. Three years later, however, I would buy a copy of George Eldon Ladd's massive Theology of the New Testament and begin to devour it. Uh, he begins that volume with a very lengthy section on the Kingdom of God, seeing it as the real key to understanding everything Jesus taught and really everything else that follows in the New Testament. And this time, the message affected me in a very big way. This was followed that year by reading John Howard Yoder's recently published book, The Politics of Jesus. Though I now know I probably didn't understand half of what he said, uh, his teaching on the kingdom combined with that of Ladd began to really enlarge my view of what the kingdom was all about and to see it as much more than just the church, which was a common misunderstanding among those of us who had been raised in the Restoration Movement. But I see now that I was still, even then, not connecting a lot of the dots. I was teaching and I was practicing uh, some very important concepts of discipleship that really fit with the message of the kingdom. But I was not, in many cases, seeing the relationship between the two. Uh, I was very much taken at the time by the things I was learning about the contrast between God's wisdom and the world's wisdom. And people who know me well know I'm still talking about the contrast between God's wisdom and the world's wisdom. I was seeing that as a theme that ran all through Scripture. But again, I didn't see how closely that idea was tied with the message of the kingdom. Ten years ago, when I wrote a book on Jesus titled, No One Like Him, I included a chapter, uh, actually about three chapters, on the kingdom. A chapter on the kingdom, a chapter on the kingdom attitudes, and a chapter on the kingdom life. And my view of how many things fit together seemed to be maturing. However, it was three years ago when Lee Camp's book, Mere Discipleship, lit a fire within me to really explore what Jesus meant by the kingdom and how it relates to everything else in the New Testament and to every aspect of our lives. Uh, Lee would later become a friend and would give input on the book that we would eventually write. Well, I've been joined in my study and on this journey by others, including my good friend Steve Brown, uh, with whom I'm co-writing what will prayerfully be a three-volume series on the kingdom. But as I look back at my own experience, I'm reminded of how right something is that I did say 
at the beginning when we first began to teach some new lessons on the kingdom a little more than two and a half years ago. I said, you may never have heard some of the terminology that we're going to be using today. Uh, you may never have understood some of the biblical concepts and some of the things from Scripture that we're going to talk about. But that doesn't mean you haven't been in the kingdom. And that doesn't mean you haven't been living a kingdom life. I went on to say that when you get up every morning and you just surrender your life to God and you say Jesus is Lord and you want to live that way, then you're living a kingdom life. But then I went on to say that we're going to enjoy the kingdom so much more and we're going to be able to live it much more powerfully the more we understand what God really has in mind. This last weekend I was reminded of something that I've said almost every time I teach about the kingdom of God and that is as exciting and challenging as I have found the kingdom teaching to be I have also found it to be a deep well and I'm constantly being made aware of how I need to keep learning I'm constantly reminded of how in our fellowship with other brothers and sisters we can be helping each other to learn so much more about the kingdom I was in another city this last weekend and I didn't get home till 12:30 a.m. An elder in my congregation and I were conducting a workshop in another church focused on three themes: kingdom, disciple, and church. And after the first two messages, one member of the leadership team in this particular church and this person works as a physical fitness trainer, uh, came to me and asked if I had read a book titled Jesus, the Jewish Theologian. Uh, I had to admit that I had not heard of it. And he said, I think you would really enjoy it, given what you're teaching about the kingdom. And so I made a note to get home and look up the book. However, on Sunday when we came together for our worship and fellowship and teaching time, my new friend came to me and he brought his book and he said, here, I want you to have this. Well, as I ate breakfast this morning, I began to browse through the book uh, my friend had given me. And a few passages caught my attention and all of a sudden I found myself riveted on what were for me some new thoughts about the kingdom and the excitement began to stir again the well you see indeed is very deep and I have much more to learn and so do you but I want to end these video casts by saying something that I've probably said before but as exciting as I think the concept of the kingdom of God is and as amazing as the ties are uh, within it that kind of pulls everything together and as fascinated as we can get and stimulated as we can get intellectually by all of that nothing really matters unless we put it into practice in our book we talk about seven things you can definitely be sure of about the kingdom in the New Testament and the last one is that it is a life to be lived I believe we need to study it I believe we need to get our thinking straight about the kingdom I believe a lot of mistakes have been made and a lot of wrong things have been done uh, because of bad thinking about the kingdom however it's when we begin to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven that we become the salt of the earth and the light of the world and begin to make a huge difference 
in other people's lives. So let's keep reading. Let's keep studying. Let's keep learning. Let's keep on receiving in our minds and in our hearts a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Let's allow waves of it to just keep coming into our lives. Let's keep on tasting the powers of the coming age. Let's keep appreciating God's amazing plan and the servant king who fulfills it. But finally, let's not just listen to the word, but let's really put it into practice. I thank you for spending the last few weeks with us, uh, doing more than just spending a moment. May God bless you as you continue to pray every day, your kingdom come.